Okay, we have our test coming up on ratios, rates, proportions, and measurement conversion. This first question here is about rate, and specifically it's about this person's typing rate. And so if you've ever played nitro type, you should be familiar with the term words per minute. Um, really only one of these answers makes sense, but let's talk through it. So uh, you do have some information on rates on page 29 in your notebook. Um, but like I said, your typing rate is words per minute. It's not how many minutes it takes you for each word. When it says per word, that's one word. Why would it take you a bunch of hours? This, this comes out to hours and hours to type one word. That doesn't make sense. Now, this isn't even an hour, but why would it take you almost an hour, close to an hour, to type one word? That also doesn't make sense. Now, 1,500 words per minute, that would be an extremely fast typing rate, right? It makes a lot more sense that we could type 43 words per minute. But let's look at the box to show us how to figure this out. And again, really only the one answer makes sense. But we're talking about how many words in how many minutes. And it said he was able to type 258 words in six minutes. We want to know how much he can type in one minute. If I cover up my diagonal numbers, I know I have to start my relationship from the six. And we know we can divide any number by itself to get one. So six divided by six is one. Therefore, we are going to divide by 6 on the other side. 258 divided by 6 does come out to 43, which is that answer choice C. But again, if you're confused and you're not sure, get rid of the answer choices that don't make sense. Why would it take that many minutes to type, or why? how could we type that many words in that many minutes, and why would it take that many minutes to type one word? Um, and again, even though that's a lot less minutes, that's very slow. One word, you should be able to type pretty quickly. Okay, so let's go on to number two. It says the ratio of right-handed students to left-handed students is, in the sixth grade is three to two. So they're giving us a ratio of right-handed to left-handed, and that's three to two. There's 90 left-handed students in the sixth grade, we want to know how many right-handed students are there. And you can, this is solving a proportion, and we learned a strategy for that also on page 29. That strategy is called the box. So I'm going to draw myself a box. We need to start with labels. And again, if you're not sure what the labels are, what are the numbers representing? Well, they're representing the right-handed students and the left-handed students. So right-handed to left-handed. Make sure you keep it in that order because these numbers, the ratio here, three to two, is going to have to stay in that order. So ratio of right-handed to left-handed was three to two. So right-handed three, left-handed two. There's 90 left-handed, so make sure you put that with left-handed. If you put it up here, you're going to find a relationship, but it's going to be the wrong relationship because it didn't say 90 right-handed. It said 90 left-handed. When I cover up my diagonals, I know I'm going to have to start my relationship from the two. There's nothing that I can multiply or divide two by to get three. So that means I'm going to need to go this way. Two times something equals 90. If you're not sure, work backwards. Figure out what 90 divided by two would be. Two goes into nine four times, which is eight. And two goes into 10 five times, which is 10. So that means that two times 45 equals 90. So we're going to do 3 times 45. And again, you don't have to do this stuff in your head. If you're not sure what it is, work it out to the side. And that gives me 135 right-handed students. Okay, the next one is about ratio tables. They've given us a ratio in the problem and they want to know which table matches that ratio. And you have some information about this on page 28 of your notebook. And we know we're looking for a ratio of one to two. And what I taught y'all when we did the notes was first to just look at the first ratio in each table. 
And unfortunately for us, they all say one to two. So we can't get rid of any based off of that. But we can start looking at, okay, what's happening to our two numbers? In this case, one times five is five, two times five is 10. So that looks good. Over here, one times six is six and two times six is 12. Okay, so if we're having the same relationship happening to both of the numbers, that's looking good. So that table looks pretty good to me. Let's look at the rest of them. Over here, one times two is two, but two times two is not six. This is times three. And if those relationships are different, that tells us that's not equivalent ratios. Our table has to be all equivalent ratios. Here we have one times two is two and two times two is four. So that looks good, but let's look at this one. One times six is six, two times four is eight. So those are not the same. Therefore, this one was good, but this one is not good. So get rid of that one. And here we have one times three is three, but two times three is not 12. Two times six is 12. So that also doesn't work. So you should have every single ratio having the exact same relationship between the top set of numbers and the bottom set of numbers. So it was answer choice A. Okay, question number four, we are converting measurements here from one unit to another unit, and you can find that on page 30 in your notebook. So we wanna go from centimeters to meters, and I taught you how to use the box for this type of problem, starting by labeling your two units from the problem, which in this case is centimeters and meters. Remember that your your middle section here is for your conversion rate, and those do not come from the problem. They come straight from your chart. So we wanna find on our chart where it talks about centimeters and meters. And I see that conversion rate right here. It tells me that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Be careful, if I put the one here, that's saying one centimeter, but the conversion rate said one meter equals 100 centimeters. So we have to make sure to use these labels. Okay, now I can put in the 13 from the problem, cover up my diagonal numbers. I know I'm gonna need to start my relationship from the 100. There's nothing that I can do to 100. I can't multiply it by anything or divide it by anything to get 13. But we learned we can do something to any number to get one. Any number divided by itself is one. So we could do 100 divided by 100 which means we need to do 13 divided by 100. If we were to work that out long division style, that's gonna look like this. And some of y'all could do this, but some of you would struggle with this. So I would recommend using the method that um, we had you write in your notebook and that um, we wrote on the board for y'all. And that was about moving the decimal point. So we talked about multiplying, you know, if you move your decimal point to the right, I'm not gonna, fill all that in because this is actually dividing. So remember that if you go to the left, you are dividing by 10. If you move it one time, you're dividing by 100. If you move it two times, you're dividing by 1,000. If you move it three times to the left. So we're trying to divide by 100. All we have to do is move our decimal point two times to the left. So in the number 13, it doesn't have a decimal point. So no decimal in sight, put it on the right. All we have to do is move it two times to the left, which is going to make it right there, which is going to give us 0 0.13 or 13 hundredths, which is answer choice B. Okay, let's move on to problem number five. They In the problem, they are giving us a ratio. They're giving us the ratio five to eight. So five to eight. And we want to know which ratio is equivalent to that ratio. And you have a problem almost identical to this on page 27 in your notebook. And what we did in that problem was we simplified every answer choice. So we wrote each ratio like a fraction, and then we looked to see if we could simplify. It. So 15 and 32. I know I can divide 15 by 3 or 5 or 15, but none of those go into 32 evenly. So we actually can't simplify the ratio 15 to 32. Let's try 20 to 32. This one we can simplify because both of our numbers are even. All even numbers are divisible by 2. That's going to give me 10 to 16. 
those are still even. So that means I can divide again. And again, they're both even, so they're divisible by two. That's gonna give me five to eight. That was the ratio that I was looking for. So that looks pretty good. You also might've noticed the original numbers were both divisible by four. So if you had done that, that would have saved you a step. But we don't wanna just assume that's our answer. We wanna try every answer choice. So 12 and 18, I know both of those are divisible by three. Three goes into 12 four times and three goes into 18 six times. Those are both even, so I can divide by two, which is gonna give me two to three. That's not the ratio I was looking for, so that is not our answer choice. Um, you might've noticed 12 and 18 were both divisible by six, so you could have just done that to begin with. Okay, and the last one is giving us the ratio five to nine. There's nothing I can divide five and nine by, so that is also already in simplest form. So remember, if you can write a ratio like a fraction, you can simplify it like a fraction, and all equivalent ratios will simplify to the same thing. Okay, this next one. The ratio of hours to dollars is 2 to 15. They're giving us that up at the top. It's important. Don't skip the information. Don't just skip to the table. Um, so this can be found on page 28. I would always recommend adding your... Uh, ratio to the top of that table. So that was the original ratio. And you can see right here, they've done two times two to get four and 15 times two to get 30. We're looking for these missing amounts here. And uh, we can use the information to figure that out. So two times four is eight, which means we need to do 15 times four, which is going to give us 60. And over here, we could do 15 times 6 to give us 90. So 2 times 6 is equal to 12. And so those are our missing amounts. There were relationships between some of these other numbers that we could have also used. Sometimes there's not, though. So make sure if they give you a ratio up here that you add it to the top of your table. And since y'all have to redraw the table anyway on your notebook paper, just make an extra row for those numbers. Okay, number seven, um, Julio leaves a 24-ounce uh, bowl of water outside in the hot sun. So we know how much is in the bowl, 24 ounces. The water evaporates at a rate of three ounces every two hours. Okay, so they've given us three numbers. We're looking for the missing number here. So we're going to solve a proportion for this. You can find this on page 29, and we're going to use the box to solve that. So this one is one of the trickier ones. So most of you should be able to figure out your labels, ounces and hours. But I know that if I were to give you all this problem, a lot of you would want to go ahead and put the 24 right there. But notice in that sentence, that first sentence, there are no other numbers that are with the 24. Remember in our notes on page 29, we said this section is for our ratio or our rate, which is the two numbers together in the problem. And they even told us right here that it was a rate. So you need to start with the three ounces every two hours. Then we can put the 24 ounces in with our missing number that goes with it. When I cover up my diagonal numbers, I know I need to start my relationship from the three there's nothing I can do. I can't multiply three by anything or divide it by anything to get two, but I can go this way. I know three times eight is 24, so I can do two times eight and get 16. As long as y'all set this up, this is set it up correctly, this isn't a hard problem. But if you were to put the 24 in the wrong spot or put it with one of the other numbers, then that might get you confused. So remember, the two numbers that are together, the rate or the ratio, go in that middle section. We have one more problem. It's back to converting from one unit to the other. So again, that's on page 30. In this problem, we're talking about inches and feet. So we would draw our box. We would put in our units, which is inches and feet. Remember, I again, some of y'all want to go straight to putting the 8.5 right here. But remember, this is for our rate. In this case, it's for our conversion rate, and they don't give us that in the problem. We have to find that on the chart. So in this problem, we're talking about feet and inches, which I see one foot equals 12 inches. So one foot equals 12 inches. 
And in the problem, they gave us 8.5 feet. So I'm going to put that over there. Covering up my diagonal numbers, I know I need to start my relationship from the 1. You can go either direction here. I'm going to choose to go up. A lot of y'all I know would choose to go to the 8.5, but either way, you're going to be doing the same thing. You're going to be multiplying those two numbers together. So 8.5 times 12, 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 gives me 17. Placeholder 0, I'm done with those numbers. 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 8 is 8. When I add these together, I get this. But be careful. If this was a multiple choice question, I guarantee 1,020 would be an answer choice. And it would be the wrong answer because there was a decimal place in our problem. So we need a decimal place in our answer. So the answer here is 102 inches. Okay, make sure you're studying and you're prepared for your test. Good luck.